What's up, folks? So it's about that time again. Amazon has just released Lumberyard beta version 1.9, and it's a pretty solid update. There are quite a few major highlights and around 470 improvements, uh, fixes, and new features for a lot of the components in the engine. The improvements, fixes, and new features have all been around a high number for each update that we've gotten so far. And it goes to show that Amazon is very dedicated to making this engine great. Um, it's a lot of refactoring, uh, rewriting, and updating um, of antiquated, I guess, workflow of the old CryEngine 3.8 um, version that this is built off of. So let's get right into it. I'm gonna keep the video as short as possible um, because I'm going to be showing or showcasing a lot of the new features uh, with upcoming tutorials. So I'm not gonna dwell too much on this video unlike my previous 1.8 video. So let's get right to it. Up first, we have the new player account Cloud Gym. Now, if you've never built a system for player accounts for multiplayer, uh, then this is really going to help you out. Even if you are familiar with building those systems, it could be a hassle. Uh, an experienced developer can probably get that system up and running in about three weeks. And this really kind of gets you up and running in about uh, 30 minutes. Uh, so it really cuts down uh, time and iteration times for upgrading your systems and building systems for your game. And that's always great. I don't know too much about the cloud gems and the overall multiplayer system of Lumberyard because um, I'm not making multiplayer games at the moment. So if you want to learn more about that, uh, definitely check out the release notes and the new documentation for that. And that should be able to help you out. Some of the more bigger highlights are new express and custom installation and the setup assistant. So now you have an option to do express, which will pretty much install everything you need to get up and running with the engine um, at its base state. And then of course you have custom where you can customize it pretty much how the engine was when they first, you know, 1.8, 1.7, 1.6 and so forth. How you have to install every little thing every little SDK that will be your custom install so if you're familiar with installing any kind of software you have an express and a custom it's pretty much uh, to that nature and it's a welcome addition for those who don't want to deal with all the all the itty bitty things of installing and just want to get into the engine and go this works out for them and it also works out for some of us more experienced developers who want to customize it to our liking and know what we do and don't need so that's awesome the new update also comes with a a little pop-up for um, rating the engine in its current state and also providing feedback right inside of the engine. So if you're using the engine for a couple of days, you should see a pop-up, I believe, and it's going to ask you can to rate the engine, and it's going to ask you if you know if you uh, were recommend this to a colleague and or how likely are you to recommend this to a colleague and then it's going to ask you for comments and if you have any suggestions to make it better and that's going to be another avenue to reach out to Amazon to make the engine better and that's great now the particle system has also gained some new features uh, some usability improvements and some platform support so this looks like it's one of the bigger updates it also moved out of preview and it's pretty much as is I'm pretty sure gonna update it and things like that but it's out of preview one of the one of the first um, new components that are out of preview so that's great so it has uh, three major selling points that for this update that I see uh, which is reconfigurable emitter uh, hierarchies yeah uh, GPU features pretty sure it's like you know um, GPU sprites and things of that nature and five new emitter types so that'd be like your beam emitter, your trail emitter. They might have like a mesh emitter in there. I haven't checked it out yet, uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, the particle system is one of those systems that I really love about game development. It's one of my best things that I like messing with when it comes to game development, but it's also one of the least things that I know about next to um, character development, or should I say character modeling, and also character animation. 
So we're definitely going to tackle those things, or I'm definitely going to tackle those three things personally this year, hopefully, because as many of you know, there's not enough hours in the day, not enough hours in the day. Moving on. And we have a new gym, which is a big one. And it's physically based shading, which is a shading model of PBR, uh, which is physically based rendering. And it basically gives your materials a, a realistic look when it comes to lighting. So the way lighting shines on metal or um, like steel, leather, plastic, in the real world will be reflected in your game engine, which gives your game that realistic look um, and gives it that authenticity. So that's a great addition. I've been waiting for them to add that. Now all we need is a material editor and we're good to go. <laughs> but uh, the gym comes with 36 physically based reference materials packed into the engine. And it's enabled by default, so you don't have to go and mess with anything. Um, so it, it replaces I believe the .dds files in the asset uh, folder which is in dev slash engine slash materials and it will be in PBS reference directory. So check those out, get familiar with the shading model of PBS and give your games a more realistic feel. So the animation runtime is now tolerant of skeletons with non-identity root bones. This applies to skeletons import it using the FBX importer or export it from Max or Maya. So with that, we don't have to worry about having the root bone specific, specifically how CryEngine wants it for it to read your character and to import the skeleton. Also for the, uh, to further that for the FBX importer, it now supports Z up axis and Y up axis uh, world coordinate systems. You can also access the FBX importer from the asset browser. So all you have to do is right click on a file and then you should have an option for edit import settings and then it should take you right to the uh, FBX importer window. Hard coded joint orientation requirements are no longer required. So that ties into also the skeleton and requiring a root bone and forward axis um, orientation. All that stuff goes out the window. So that's great. So it works a little bit more like Unreal and Unity where you can just import a mesh and it will read that skeleton in that mesh as is and import it regardless. Well guys, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button and don't forget to leave a comment below if you guys have any questions or comments. Uh, there are tons and tons of more that this update offers. Um, like I said, it had over 470 improvements and fixes. I just read off a couple of things that were important to me and that I think would be important to you guys. But if you want to check out every little detail, do not forget to go to the forum and the blog post just to read up on it and see what it offers and what it really entails um, throughout. Or if not, just dive and download it and dive into the new uh, update and play around with it. Um, I definitely will be doing this myself and uh, making further tutorials. I know I say this a lot but um, I am currently working on my game that is in Unreal Engine. It's already been greenlit. Um, I'm hoping to get it done within the next month and get it released. So it always reinvigorates me to mess with another engine like Lumberyard when they have updates um, because it kind of weighs down trying to spend my time from getting a game done in a solid engine like Unreal to going to some of the uh, missing features that are currently in Amazon but they are definitely closing that gap of convenience um, that I had because I'm spoiled with Unreal and, Uni and coming from Unity even before that uh, because of the convenience that it offers and then Amazon is definitely definitely closing that gap so um, yeah guys hope you guys enjoyed the video uh, don't forget to like it please do it definitely helps the channel out a lot if you have any developer friends who are looking to use Amazon definitely share this video with them and yeah, I guess I will catch you guys later and always remember to keep developing.